Let's take a look at this video. It talks about a solar powered plane. And always with these news stories, they're going to show the occult with Freemasonry. And the most interesting aspect is the very end where they show the model of the flat earth with the plane flying around it, just like the sun travels around the flat earth. Let's take a look. Historic moment today in aviation. For the first time, a solar powered plane has crossed the Atlantic Ocean without using fossil fuel. The Solar Impulse 2 landed in Spain today, three days after taking off from New York. As Eric Sorensen explains, what was once thought to be impossible is now a reality. It is like a UFO. Few recognize it when they first see it. It even sounds otherworldly. The Solar Impulse, powered by 17,000 solar cells, is unlike anything that has flown. But they want to mention, they show the Golden Gate Bridge, and of course, it's international orange. The reason for everything they do. Blown long distances before. Okay, so I am 200 feet. Wider than a 747, lighter than a car. It flies at 80 kilometers an hour. The pilots alternate flying each leg. During this entire flight. Now watch what this supposed pilot does here. And of course, he's wearing the orange. I'll get into that in a little bit. Take a look at his basic salute he does. Right. I have only moments of... There you go. That's the, the mockery with the Nazi salute. These are all Masons, all part of the rigged reality. Take a look at his name. Joy. And even airplanes passing by and saying all the... The surname of Picard. Okay? I mentioned this before, and I'll play that previous video at the end of this presentation. Now understand again taking a look at these astronauts and they're all wearing orange for the occult of orange which is 33 like I said so many times in numerology all about Freemasonry just like again Hillary Clinton wearing the orange doing the Nazi salute just like the supposed pilot again from this plane doing the Nazi salute you can find it right here back up as he does it again right here now again getting back to Clinton her surname, taken from Bill Clinton, who was born William Blythe, changed his name to Clinton to get the 33. So Clinton is 33, the orange is 33, and of course, the salute for Adolf Hitler. Just like these books that you see from Nazi era with Adolf Hitler's Mein Kampf and these other ones as well. Again, again, getting back to the astronauts, that's what they are, astronauts. And you see, again, the orange, you see the the so-called peace sign, which is nothing more than the Roman numeral 5. You see this, basically a serpent's tongue as a part of the NASA logo. And I find it very interesting. STS-113, and of course you get the 311, you get the 33 as well. So always the occult with these Freemason frauds. Now talking about another Freemason fraud here, or to get too far off subject, is Donald Trump. And the reason he wears this orange makeup this guy's a multi-millionaire billionaire and he's wearing this orange clown makeup and why is that he's just a character on the world stage this is what it's all about I mean, he has enough money to hire someone to properly apply a fake tan he's got this garbage on all, again he's just nothing more than a character on the world stage so understand what's taking place here with all these masons in the game all these deceivers now getting back to this footage once again with this solar powered plane and getting back to the topic of the flat earth now let's take a look once again i have only moments of joy and even airplanes passing by and saying on the atc frequency wow your plane is beautiful what is it what it is is an airplane that shows what future air travel may look like yes it's almost as wide as a football field is long which i'll take a look here this newscaster is standing on this is a representation of the flat earth one thing even more interesting than the flat earth model itself is take a look as they show a model of a plane flying above the flat earth just one seat but just as the wright brothers couldn't carry passengers solar impulse represents the first steps in solar powered flight and to prove its potential they began flying it around the world from abu dhabi La this is exactly how a plane flies over the flat earth last year with stops in India and China then across the vast Pacific and how the Sun works as well 
you know, in most cases, of course, you're going to take a direct route. But this is basically simulating how a plane flies. It does not go around a ball. A plane always keeps its nose up, okay? Anybody that's ever flown on international flights, you never feel like you're going around or you're going upside down on a globe or a ball earth. It's because you never do. You're flying above a plane. That's exactly what's taking place here. And this is all about mockery. Remember, it has no fuel. It that was onto the United States, hopscotched across there America, powered only by the sun. Nothing and now it has but mockery. Itself. Nothing but mockery. Just like this model here, which is exactly how the sun travels around the flat earth. As I showed many times in previous demonstrations, Earth is much closer to us than we're told exactly how it operates. Now, to understand the programming when it came to Star Trek, the original series, which aired from 1966 to 1969, basically it served its purpose. In 69, they supposedly landed a man on the moon. They no longer need this programming for the time being, but it was reintroduced in 1987 as the next generation. Well, interesting enough, they had a character named Captain Picard. Here he is right here. You see, again, Gene Roddenberry. Now, a very interesting connection when it comes to Captain Picard and the reason Gene Roddenberry selected that name for Captain Picard of the Enterprise. Again, it's all going to relate to Freemasonry. Let's take a look back here at 1931 in this magazine called Popular Science, August of 1931. Let's take a closer look here. You had Swiss engineer Jean Bacard, the balloon. I'm going to get into this. But first off, notice the spelling is a little bit different than Captain Bacard. There's two C's instead of one C. Get into that again. And here's an image with his brother, August Bacard. I find it very interesting. Gene Roddenberry decided on this name for Captain Bacard. And it was basically after August Bacard. And taking a look here at Popular Science, you can take a look at this on Google. I'll include a link in the description box below the video. You can see here on Wikipedia that Star Trek creator Gene Rottenberry named Picard for one or both of the twin brothers, August Picard and John Felix Picard, 20th century Swiss scientist. Now taking a look at the article in the magazine, it talks about Professor August Picard, physicist with Charles Kepner, aimed to explore the air at 50,000 feet up. 17 hours later, they were forgotten for dead, but safely returned to Earth. They estimated they went up to 52,000 feet, which is basically 10 miles. Now, interesting enough here where it states how in the first half hour, the balloon shot up 9 miles. Basically, it seemed to them that they saw a disk with the upturned edge. And this is the flat Earth that they saw. Now, this is the world of duality with Freemasons, the scientist that saw with his own eyes the flat Earth from a hot air balloon. The captain of a spaceship in outer space is given the name Picard. Completely ridiculous how these Freemasons love to mock. Now, let's take a look at this scene from Star Trek The Next Generation. This is from 1988, Season 2, Episode 2. Take a listen to what is said here. Remember the course in ancient history at Starfleet Academy? About the time when men still believed the Earth was flat, mm. and that the sun revolved around it, and that if a ship sailed too far out into the ocean, it would fall off the edge of the world. Beyond this place, there'd be dragons. Again, this is how they love to mock. Space, a final frontier. Space may be a final frontier, but it's made in a Hollywood basement. Fascinating, fascinating, fascinating. And taking a look at the similarities of the United Federation of Planets logo from Star Trek and the United Nations logo. As shown before, the United Nations symbol and the flat Earth map, one and the same. And the UN logo, that symbol, just so happens to have 33 segments as well. Now this is the world of duality with Freemasons, the scientist that saw with his own eyes the flat Earth from a hot air balloon captain of a spaceship in outer space is given the name Picard. Completely ridiculous how these Freemasons love to mock. And again, I mentioned how Captain Picard is spelt with one C, unlike the two Cs with the, with the Swiss scientists. There's a reason for that. 
And again, it all has to do with the occult of 33. This is not by chance, not by coincidence. Again, it's all about the occult. If you don't understand the occult, you don't understand about Freemasonry, this will all go right over your head. 